welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and purists look away right now because we're going to be taking grotty figures like this and seeing whether we can tart them up just enough to look respectable on the tabletop without too much effort. Let's have a, let's have a try. I mentioned a few times that I'm um, been collecting a whole load of English Civil War figures over, well, as it transpired, many years uh, without um, ever getting around to fielding an army. And I think it's because some time ago, um, I, uh, friends of mine, friends of mine who, who I war gamed with at those times, um, were looking at the war, uh, was it the Warhammer English Civil War rules. Uh, we bought them, we were going to play some games and never quite got round to it. Uh, we'd always played 15 mil ECW. Um, but I really, really hankered after playing the, playing the period and I never really got the chance to do it. Now, I showed a game um, on the channel where uh, Alec down at the club, Farnborough War Gaming Club, um, took pity on me and gave me a game um, using um, pike and shot rules from Warlords. And I thought, right, great excuse. So I've been digging out all these figures that I had collected, a few that I'd bought more recently. Um, and I thought I'd done really well. I got like three regiments of infantry, some cavalry, and I picked a few more up on eBay. Um, sitting here ready to go. These guys were bought on eBay. Um, and I was clearing out the garage the other weekend, and which is where a lot of my older, older figures are stored. Um, and I opened up box that I didn't know existed and inside was a whole variety of figures including a whole load more English Civil War figures um, and there's quite a lot of them here <laughs> I've got uh, well if I take out the leaders I've got about well enough for 24 pikemen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 sorry 16 pikemen so that's two that's one block of pike for a regiment and uh, 1, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 25 uh, musketeers and as you can see if you can they're in various states of painting not very well painted actually um, I don't know who painted them I suspect they were whoever I bought them from I don't even I do not even remember buying them I you know in my head I remember picking up figures thinking well I remember that I had started to acquire English Civil War figures but I don't know where and I don't know when um, and these are clearly them and they've been these ones are metal some of these are metal the pikemen are metal the uh, all the musketeers are plastic there's a few plastics here I recognize these are warlord figures um, and I thought well you know if you watch this channel you know that I'm fairly speedy painter and one of the ways I do that is by cheating an awful lot and I thought I don't really want to strip down all these figures I mean that's what the proper painter would do They'd somehow get rid of all these paints and most of them seem to be um, acrylic paints but I thought you know what I'm not going to do that I'm going to tart them up and see what see what I can do with secondhand badly painted figures to make them into something a bit more presentable for the tabletop. So that's my challenge today. So let's see how we go. So what I've decided to do is basically just uh, working through twelve uh, in the, the pikemen with the musketeers anyway. Work through twelve at a time, and just rather than stripping back. It, trying to enhance the basic colors that guy needs a bit of work with his arms so maybe we'll park him for a minute uh, this guy yeah so this guy's got a sort of a a browny tan top on so what I'm gonna do is take out all the figures that have a similar that's more yellowy but that will do that sort of color like that this guy's a bit lighter a bit darker sorry so there's four of them like that and all I'm going to do is take out the trusty contrast paints so this is Iliandi yellow contrast paint give it a good old shake I'm going to paint just slap it on 
Now the beauty of the contrast paints is they are so liquidy, that's the word, the viscosity, that's the posh word for it, is so relaxed, so easy, that it kind of goes on so easily on pre-painted figures, as long as they're not enamel. I don't think this would work with enamel, in fact I'm sure it wouldn't work with enamel. But what I'm doing is splashing it all over. I won't, don't worry, I'm not going to show you painting every single figure here. But I just thought I'd give you an idea how easy this is. So you don't even have to be terribly accurate. Oops, of course you have to, don't have to drop them on the floor. So there you go, he's done. Quick as that. Just put that contrast paint over that yellow, like yellowy brown. Next up, we'll do some more. So next up, I'm going to use a little bit of um, Gulliman's Flesh, again, contrast paint for the flesh tone. Um, I find this stuff really good. I use it as a base flesh, and then I touch it up with a little bit of light, other, you know, uh, more conventional skin tone over the top just as a sort of a highlight and I find that works really well but again all I'm doing sploshing this on where the original flesh tone was boom done and you can see that so we've got two colors done there so next up I'm going to use this basilicum gray contrast paint and I'm going to do these trousers. Again, doesn't need to be terribly accurate. Just slap it all over. And I'm well aware this is, you know, going to be impacting how the, the sort of. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cover over a lot of the detail on the figure. But when they're in mass ranks, are you really going to notice? Trousers done. So what's that taking us? A couple of minutes to do the skin tone, the coat, and the trousers. Just touching them up each time. So next up, going to be using the Agaros Dunes, the brown colour. I'm just going to use that on this guy's boots. Again, I'm not going to be too worried about this because I'm going to use basic material which is going to cover up a lot of the the boot area. So I find you don't have to be terribly accurate even when I'm doing figures properly. So I'm slapping this on. There we go. And I might just use the same colour on his musket. There we go. Leave that to dry for a minute. Oh, let's just show you first before I do that. See that guy? Already an improvement, I think you'll agree. I'm going to use uh, snake bite leather just to do his hair. So normally I'll be doing this as a batch, and so I'll be allowing them to dry a bit between because these dry very quickly. But you can see here. Bump. Big splodge on there. Bob's your auntie. There we go. I think also I'm going to do one of his cross belts in leather. 
Now I'm going to do the other one in black, but this one I'm going to do in leather. Can't you see where that one comes through? There. There we go. Done. I'll just do the handle of the sword as well. Because they would be leather probably as well. There's a man. So skin tone's done, coat's done, trousers are done, boots have done, guns done, one of the belts done. We're back after this is dried a bit. Right, being a silly Billy, I forgot that I've got one of these um, holders that uh, Imogen bought me for Christmas. Um, so I might as well use it for a single. I don't normally do single figures, so that's the like, excuse. So we've done a lot of the base colours. Let's now I have to use regular white paint here just to do the chaps. What chaps are they? Just there's sort of a rolled sock area just above the boot. Again, I'm not going to be anal about how accurate this is because we're going to give it a damn good wash oops try not to slop it everywhere Dom there we go that's that now on these musketeers there's a little bit of I was going to say string it's not string it's um like a wick that runs down there so we'll just use the white while we're there that's that so what's this taken only a couple of minutes well, in fact taking a little bit longer because I've had to allow it to dry but you know real time painting a couple of minutes and this and the what's it um, contrast dries so quickly Little bit of uh, what's this one? Plate mail metal. I kind of like using a bright metal when I'm doing this next stage because I use um, an ink wash over it, and I find that that dulls the colour down so much. So I'm just going to do the trigger, just really touching it very finely on there, just to bring it out. The stock on the musket just to touch that up and just run the brush across the top with the musket like that oops to symbolize the barrel again I'm not getting too anal about this this is just they're going to be in a mass unit three foot away and that's all I'm looking for is the effect let's just do the sword grip not grip the crossbar there and the um, oh, what do they call it the finger protector should now I used to fence but I can't think so that's that I think I'm going to leave there scabbard on this one that's exactly as it is so we're getting there need a bit of black this is army paint and matte black doesn't really matter what it is to be honest as long as it comes out the tube oh there we go of course it comes out too much We're just going to do the other cross belt. Bit sloppy there, just realised I've missed the um, 
cuffs on the not collars on that jacket. I'll come back and do that in a minute. So there you go. That's the, probably the most challenging bit of the lot. And what I'm trying to do is basically just use the colours that are already there on the figure. Rather than battling about doing a whole new colour scheme and changing it all completely, I'm using what's already there. This guy's got a bit of a collar there. So I'm just going to touch a bit of white on that and there on the other side. And it's got like a little... It's not terribly clear because of the amount of paint on this figure now, but... It's got a little sort of uh, neckerchief type thing. So there you go, it's coming together nicely, you can see. So it's pretty much done now. But I'm just going to do a little touch, which I think makes a little bit of difference on the skin tone. Gets just this an old, God, what is this? Vallejo, is it Vallejo? Yeah, it is Vallejo medium flesh. Now, what I am going to do just touch the the nose, the chin cheeks like that. I'm just going to run it slightly over the knuckles and the fingers just to accentuate that. Just give a little bit of colour contrast. You see that? Does that come out alright? So he's done. Oh, actually no he's not. I've just seen <laughs> His collar goes all the way around the back. So this is the trouble trying to do it on film. And so I would normally do them all in relay. So I'd do the four or so that I had that were wearing the same colour. Do them. Then I'd move on to the next colour coats. Then I'd do the next colour uh, trousers. You know, work through all the coats, colours, the bigger colours. Do all the skin tone together of the 12 that I'm doing. Do the um, trousers next of the same colours. Um, then all the boots together. Etc, etc. Just stage by stage by stage. I find that's the best way. Gets me through the unit quickest. So there you go. There's our original musketeer. He was a bit of a state is slightly less of a state now. So next up, and this is very much the secret source of the process, Army Painter Quick Shade Dark Tone Wash with a little bit of water. Slap it all over. All over the figure, completely, head to tail. This just hides a multitude of sins darkens the colour down a bit a lot actually and accentuates the what details left on the figure there we go simps and he's done so we'll be back when I've done a few more of his companions so here the pikemen so they've been done with the same process. Basically just touched up the original colours, then put the dark wash all over them, stuck them down on the bases, used the late Luke's APS to cover the bases. So you can see their feet have pretty much disappeared. That's pretty good. Well, one stage left with these, and that's a bit of dry brushing. So Let's make a little bit of space here. Uh, I'm going to use. Oh no, I'm not going to use that. There's my white. Really need to organise my paints. So I'm going to use uh, matte white from Army Painter. Doesn't, have, doesn't really matter what it is. As long as it's uh, a good colour. 
splutter it there, Oop, rather more than I meant to, never mind, should use a wet palette. I find newspaper is terrific for drying off a brush, uh, dry, getting um, a lot of the brush off when you're doing, a lot of the um, paint off when you're doing dry brushing. So here we go. I'm just going to run that all over this guy. If it's too much, you can just rub it off. We'll do it over him. It would have been simpler not to have based them, but this is supposed to be easy. There we go. There you go. Just a bit of highlighting on them. Next up, varnish them. So there you go. They've been varnished. Dry brushed, varnished. Which dulls the colour down nicely. So there you go. There's the finished effect. And I think that's pretty okay. <laughs> Uh, again, I apologise to the purists out there, um, but if you want to get some figures on the table relatively quickly, I mean, I, I should have timed this, um, and I didn't, but it kind of taken me more than painting time, a couple of hours, to get figures like this to look like that, without any stripping, without any real work, just using um, contrast paints and using... Um, washes and a bit of highlighting, nice basing to get that kind of mass effect for a table top game. And there, the figures I found in a box I didn't even know I had, taken me a couple of hours, and I've got another regiment for our English Civil War Army ready to rock and roll. And I'm not too ashamed about them being on the table, I think they look pretty good. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. In the meantime, enjoy your games. Have fun. Try not to take it all too seriously. Just have fun. And I'll see you again soon. This is Dom signing out.